I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Father, Amen. 
through the grace of adoption, chose us to be children of light. Grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. One day Elisha was passing through Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to have a meal. So whenever he passed that way, he would stop there for a meal. She said to her husband, Look, I am sure that this man, who regularly passes our way, is a holy man of God. Let us make a small roof chamber with walls, and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that he can stay there whenever he comes to us. One day when Elisha came there, he went up to the chamber and lay down there. He said to his servant Gehazi, What then may be done for the woman? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. Elisha said, Call her. When the servant had called her, she stood at the door. Elisha said, At this season, in due time, you shall embrace a son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. They exult in your name all day long, and extol your righteousness. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. For you are the glory of their strength. By your favor our horn is exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so, so we might walk in newness of life. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Holy nation, praise 
God who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever lives father, loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, that person will not lose the reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones it would be nice to have a nice cup of cold water right now because the Lord granted us a great gift uh, this morning, very early, because he gave us a little bit of rain. So that means that uh, for 20 minutes the air was refreshed. And after that it's so humid that we cannot breathe, at least I cannot. So I'm sweating and for this reason the homily will be short. So thank you Lord for this gift. I also want to, to thank you, all the volunteers, all the people, all the clergy, all the lay leaders that are helping in this process to reopen the churches, because it's a nightmare. There is a mountain of things to do, and have been, uh, we have been together working very hard for the past week and a half, and this coming week there will be more work, and cross the fingers and say a prayer, hopefully next week we'll be able to reopen the churches and finally have Mass. So there is still a lot of work to do. So this much is spiritual, this much is pastoral, and all the rest is administration about putting signage on, on the floor, on the benches, and organizing for registration and telephone calls and answering machines. I'm going crazy, so that means that please pray for me before something bad happens to my head and gets even worse than it is already. So this having been said, let's see two words about God's word, right? Today I would like to focus my attention on the first reading from the Old Testament, from the second book of Kings. It is important, an important part of the scripture of the Old Testament, because it speaks about the prophet Elisha. In that part of the scripture, there are two main characters that are described. The first is the prophet Elijah, the one who met God up on the mountain, in the gentle breeze. He is the one who was fighting for the faith of Israel, for the God of Israel, against paganism, and all those who were trying to steal the faith of Israel. And for that reason, he was persecuted his whole life. At the end of his journey, he called Elisha to continue his mission. And in doing that, he met Elisha as he was... Uh, taking care of his fields and of his property. He was a rich and very wealthy man. Uh, the story says, the Bible says that he was uh, uh, tilling uh, his, uh, his fields with uh, 12 pairs of oxen. So the means that he was very, very rich. And when Elijah passed by, he threw his cloak on Elisha. And that was the sign of being called. What did Elisha do? He recognized in that sign God's call and he left everything behind, and he began his journey to become another great prophet in Israel. He accompanied Elijah to his last trip, and when Elijah, he was taken into heaven in a chariot of fire, then Elisha received the spirit of Elijah, and he walked on Israel, performing so many miracles, stirring the faith, continuing to be the prophet of God, 
the voice of God for the people of Israel. So today we hear this story about him who was having his uh, uh, travels all along the land of Israel, and one day he was passing through Shaman, this place that is unclear where it is. In that place there was a wealthy family, a wealthy woman, who was urging him to go to her place. Like Jesus with Martha and Mary, she wanted to uh, receive him in her house, to offer him something to eat and a place to stay and rest. Why did she do that? Well, first of all, because she had a good heart. But even more so because she recognized in Elisha a man of God. And this is the point that I would like to bring to, uh, to your attention today. A man of God. Today, using a more inclusive language, we'll call, talk about a man of God or a woman of God. This is what we are all called to. What does it mean? What does it mean to be a man of God or a woman of God? When people, they meet me, when people, they meet you, what do they say? What do they think? When people, they meet me, do they find uh, a guy with dressed like a Franciscan friar, like Friar Tuck from Robin Hood's stories? Do they meet uh, a crazy uh, Italian guy that came here, uh, I don't know, following uh, his crazy, adventurous mind, do they find a man of God? When people, they meet us, how do they feel? What do they think? Do they perceive God's presence? This could be a great blessing of this time that we, we have been journeying, being uh, uh, taken away from the celebration of the Eucharist. Because all of us, we needed to find a different way of being Christians. Because we didn't stop being Christians on March 14th, when our churches were closed. We are still Christians. So when people, they meet us, they can say, oh, this is a follower of Christ. This is a man of God. This is a woman of God. What makes us people of God? Men of God and women of God? Well, the great love that we have for our Lord it shines through our hearts, through our voices, through our actions. Our presence uh, makes God present so that He can shine through us. We don't need to do much. We just need to be in love with Him. And our love will open our hearts to His Word and to His law, the law of love, so that we can be truly Christians. Now, this is what people, I hope, they say about all of us when they meet us. And I hope that when we start to mass again, we receive even more grace to be men and women of God. So that we can be a true and strong Christian presence on earth. This is what it means to be Christians. Once I was talking with uh, some friends, and they were telling me, well, Father, you know, to be Christians, I think it's more than just going for mass. And inside myself, I said, oh, mm -mm, okay, well, this is okay, but maybe I will need a little bit of, of time and a gentle way to let them know how important it is to go for Mass. Because it is important, it's essential, it's the foundation of our faith. But then something else starts to move inside of my head. This is something that is interesting, because, you know, when you love and respect and trust someone, one of the tricky things that happen is that you allow that person to challenge you. And so I let that person challenge me, and I start to think in a different way. It is true, mass is essential, and I would like to convey that importance to this person. But for what reason this person whom I love and I trust is saying this? And so I tried to put myself in the shoes of this person. And I realized the difference of perspective, the difference of sensitivity, the difference of how God is talking with a person, different than me. And so I realize, okay, this is where this idea is coming from. And it's not all wrong, because for someone who didn't receive the grace of being completely dedicated to the sacraments, someone who didn't receive the grace maybe to, to become a consecrated religious, what does he need to be a Christian? It is true to go for Mass on Sunday is essential, but for someone who is not inside 
the mystery, but his journey towards it, there is a piece of it. It is a faithful uh, fulfilling of the obligation that we love. But there is more that needs to be expressed. And then I realized, well, the journey that we need to accomplish as parish community, and I hope everybody else, is to engage in an interior journey so that we can grow interiorly as Christians. Continuing to go to Mass because it's essential. And then one day the Lord will receive us all the graces of Mass. But we cannot disjoin one from the other. Maybe for a long time we just thought that fulfilling the obligation for it was enough. No, we need to engage personally. We need to allow God's Word to change us so that people can say, this is a man of God. This is a woman of God. So that when we go for Mass, we can have our eyes opened and discover having the mystery being revealed to us. And when people meet us, they will meet God. And we will become tools of evangelization of God's revelation. So, Mass is important because it transforms us. And so all the things that we do as Christians, they will all transform us. So we are all on, the, on a journey of transformation. And myself too. To fulfill my obligations is not enough. I need to engage personally. I have to decide. This is the next step of my reasoning about being a man or a woman of God. Do I want to be a man or a woman of God? Do I want it? Because if I want it, I can decide it. Even a step before. To want it, I have to desire it. Do I desire to be a man of God? Do I desire to be a woman of God? Desires that are stirred by, by beauty, by goodness. Do I see the beauty of being a man of God? Do I feel the appeal of being a man of God? So what idea do I have about myself in my head? That is an important question. Do I picture myself as a man of God with all the defects that you all know and there are much more, trust me, because I know them, and praise be to God, you don't, I hope. But do I have this image of myself? And my journey to fulfill that image. How much that image is configured according to the image of Christ. How much I want to make my life a long journey focused on this being transformed into Christ day by day. With every action, with every decision, with every kind word, with every mistake. And with every mass they will celebrate together, hopefully soon. What am I ready to change? If I want to become a man of God, I need to renounce to something and I need to take on something else. What am I ready to take on? What am I ready to renounce to? This is uh, interesting because uh, lately I am reading a book that Teresa of Avila wrote. It's The Way of Perfection. Very, very good. And she was saying that to grow in contemplation, which means in prayer, in uh, loving God, in being uh, uh, more in depth into this relationship with God Almighty, I need to do three things here on earth. The first one, I need to love my brothers and sisters. Because if I do not love them, my prayer doesn't grow. If I don't give myself to my brothers and sisters, my relationship with God doesn't change. Even if I pray 20 rosaries, and tomorrow I'll pray 30. And in a week time, I'll pray 40. Well, it's a good thing. Thank you for praying for me and for the church. But that doesn't help the journey if I don't apply myself in loving. That is essential. First thing. Second one, to detach myself from things. Do I accept everything as a gift? Do I remain stuck to the image of myself, to my ambitions, to my hopes, to my fears, to my needs, to my cravings? How much am I attached to all of that? Am I ready to renounce to something? I really shouldn't talk because I'm smoking, which is a terrible, uh, uh, bad habit. But am I able to renounce to one cigarette for the sake of God? Well, today I'm not, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> but that is the concept. Am I ready to give something to Him so that He can do something for me? Not because we are trading goods, but because I am showing Him my openness of heart. And the third one, the most important, humility. If you are not humble, we cannot grow in our relationship with God. Why? Because my head will be full of the good ideas that I have, 
that fulfilled the dream of my omnipotence, chasing always the image of myself, of being uh, strong and smart and uh, super cool, maybe taller than I am, even that some days, which is terrible. Am I ready to renounce to that? Am I ready to tell myself, Francesco, be quiet and listen. To be humble doesn't mean to be submissive. It doesn't mean to, I don't know, to bend to every request, to everything that happens. It means to tell ourselves, God reveals to me who I am. I don't tell myself. That's humility. So that the truth of myself can be revealed to me by God, and then I can express it with everybody else. Those are the steps of humility. If you fulfill these three steps, love, brotherly love, detachment and humility, then our love for God will grow. Our prayer will grow. And, the God's, and God's presence will grow in my heart and people will see that I am more and more a man of God or a woman of God. Do I have any help in this journey? Because trust me, it's not easy. I've been you know, struggling with it for, for a few years. Maybe you have the same struggle. Uh, do I have any help? Yes, I do. I have models to look at who are the saints. I understand that there's been a long debate in the church and with the other Christian denominations about what is the value of the saints, what are the saints about, what is all this, uh, all this thing. Because maybe it's, a, uh, it's an old-fashioned devotional uh, silliness of the Catholics. Well, no, no, it, the saints are important. Because the saints are the models of living according to the image of Christ. The saints, like Elisha, they are men and women of God that we can look at. And there are lots of defects, I'm sure, but we need to look at the good parts. And here, we need to look at modern saints. Because to look at St. Francis is good for us, for us Franciscans, maybe it's not good for everybody. To look at St. Benedict and St. Dominic and St. Ignatius, which are all good. Let's look at something that is a little bit closer to us. What about St. Andrew Messet? Great saint here in Canada. In Montreal, how many millions of hearts did he touch? What about Saint Padre Pio? When we look at him, what do we see? What do we perceive? What is our faith telling us? When we look at Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, what do we experience in our heart? And because all those who are here today, you know how to use internet. Well, use internet. And Google St. Andre de Sette, St. Padre Pio, St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta and see from the witnesses of the people who knew them. Look at their stories. Get inspired. It is true, maybe some other people, they, will say, they could say, well, but these are religious and, uh, you know, but we are not like that, uh, so our life is different. Okay, let's look at other models. You think that these people, they're, I don't know, they don't fit the idea of a dynamic and strong and courageous and uh, active person. Good. Let's look at St. Jean of Arc. She's not recent, but she was a warrior. She was a woman who dressed the armor as a man. And she was leading the French Catholic army. For what they know, she didn't kill anybody, but she was on the battlefield. That's a model of holiness. She's a woman of God. And she's also a model of courage. So she wasn't just in a convent praying the whole time. But she was fighting. Fighting for what she believed. And in some of us, they will think, yeah, okay, she's good, uh, she's courageous, we like her. But what about us who are married? Well, Google St. Gianna Beretta Molla, M-O-L-L-A. A married woman from Italy. She was a saintly woman, she lived saintly, and she gave her life to allow the child she was carrying in her womb to be born. She is a woman of God. Let's look at them so that we can learn, imitate them, so that we can have a, a direction and a guideline on how to conduct ourselves in life. And we can grow. We can grow in our faith, we can grow as men and women of God, and we can become a sign. The sign is not what we say. The sign is not even the beautiful churches that we have. The sign is ourselves. If I am a man of God, I will be the sign. And what I say will be received. But if people that don't see me as a man of God, whatever I will say will just fly over their heads. 
We need to be men and women of God. So that people, they can love us and trust us. As I love and trust the person who called me on opening the eyes and looking with uh, uh, a renewed mindset to the journey in front of us. May the Lord bless us and protect us. Please pray for all the volunteers, all the people who are working hard to reopen the churches. And I hope to see you in person next Saturday and Sunday in uh, all the churches here in uh, St. Francis and St. Clair Parish. God bless you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now let us turn to our Heavenly Father and offer all of our prayers and petitions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for his needs and intentions, that he may be guided and protected by means of the Holy Spirit. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop Anthony, for Bishop Brian, for the Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth. We pray for the reopening of the churches. We pray that the Lord may touch our hearts and our minds, that we may be images of Christ to all of those that we meet. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for government leaders. We pray for health care workers, health authorities. We pray for all of those who are continuing to lead us through this time of pandemic. We pray that they may be inspired by the Holy Spirit. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who are sick, those who are suffering in any way, physically, mentally, or spiritually, we pray that the Lord may visit them in their need and bring them healing and strength. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those who have died, we pray that they may be welcomed into the kingdom of heaven. And for those who are left to grieve for them, may they be consoled. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of this family who have gathered before you. Let our prayers be answered according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of His name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, You give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. <clears throat> May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis, St. Clare, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, Anthony our Bishop, Brian his co the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei,
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my grief. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. O Father, I pray for them, that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me, says the Lord. spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us offer all of our <clears throat> prayers and petitions into the arms of our Blessed Mother. Ave Maria. Gracia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu, in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. 
church. We're planning on having this Mass available for those who uh, may not be able to uh, go to the Mass uh, at the church. Uh, once things open up more, we may discontinue it, but uh, stay tuned. So at least for next Sunday, the plan is, is that we'll be here again at 9.30 for the Mass. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, be our angel, defend us in battle, be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.